Hey everyone, Lot here for Intagma, and in this tutorial, I will show you how to create a path solver in Houdini, a system that will allow you to move a large amount of objects in a certain path pattern without them intersecting each other. Also, in the end of the video, we will be reviewing two assets that will be coming with this tutorial. So if you are here for it, head over to the 20th minute of the video. And now let's start this lesson with the path solver theory. So we start off with any kind of mesh we want and define its points as potential objects and open cells by attaching a certain data to them. And as you can see here, I've attached the potential object names to the points, so they are now considered as objects. And the rest of them is considered as open cells now. After we establish the initial state, let each point that stores an item choose a cell to transfer the data to, and then perform the transfer. After repeating the operation a few times, We'll have an animation of points passing data around. Now we need to convert data shuffling into object shuffling, which basically means we need to copy those objects onto these points. And by matching their names, we can really tell from which point in this geostream we want to transfer the position data to which object in this geostream. So this is how we'll have our objects copied properly onto the points. As you may have noticed, if we repeat the previous step that is passing the data between the points and let's say we will transfer the item a from point one to point two and we will end up having a pretty harsh animation of the objects that are basically jumping from a point to another point so we would definitely want to smooth that out well the solution here is pretty obvious here we have the object a placed somewhere here on the first frame and it moves somewhere else on the second frame so we would just need to really stretch the whole thing to 21 frames, let's say, and fill those in-between frames with the same object to create a smooth animation. So that's it for the theory, let's start implementing the thing. I'll create a grid. Let's dive in. I would like to change the camera view to top view part. Let's create a noise from which we will create a point group. I will use attribute noise to do so. Let's change the signature to one dimensional and let's call the attribute set. Append group expression node here. Change the group type to points. Let's call the group PTS and text expression like set more than 0.5. Okay, great. So let's visualize the group now. And I would definitely want to change the size of the points. So let's do that. I also noticed that the grid became kind of half transparent here, so I would like to fix that. Let's shift the grid in Y a bit and get rid of the ruler. Now I think everything looks pretty. Now we need to sequentially enumerate the points that are in the group. And the points that are out of the group should get a value of minus one, which means they are now considered as open cells. This can be done with enumerate node, so let's create it. Let's use the group we would like to enumerate here, uh, group type to points, and let's call the attribute ID. Also, let's visualize it. And as you can see, we've got the expected result here. Now we need to create the target attribute that will mean where the point wants to transfer its data, and we need the default settings for it. And number of minus one means no targets were found. So as our initial state is established, let's think about how we perform the data transfer between the points. Let's take a look at a solution in sequential processing, which is the act of attending and processing one point at a time. So we start off with point one with item A and let it choose a point to transfer the data to. And on the second iteration, we are attending and processing the point three with item B. And as you can see, it cannot choose the point two because in the previous iteration, it was already taken by some other point. So it rather chooses point zero. And then we perform the transfer. Okay, that works. But there is a big downside. As we are attending and processing one point at a time, we're basically limiting our CPU to be working on one core which means no multi-processing, so the algorithm will be as slow as Adobe After Effects. And we probably don't want that. So is there any alternative solution? 
And there is parallel processing, which is the simultaneous use of multiple computer resources to solve a computational problem, which means in theory, the point one can be taken by one CPU core and point three by another, and they both being solved at the same time, which leads to a situation when they both pointing out the same cell. And if we perform the transfer, we end up losing data. So here's a way around it. Let's gather desired cells for points first, which are our potential objects, and then do the same operation for the cells. So we let them gather desired points, and if they pick each other, perform data transfer. Let's start with points or so-called potential objects. Let's limit the wrangle to the group PTS. In this wrangle, we'll collect all the neighboring cells for each point and put it into an array. And then we will choose randomly one of the items in the array and put it into our target attribute. Let's create an empty array and call it available cells. Let's collect the neighbors for each point into an array by using enhanced loop that is the same thing as for each. Let's call the variable cell and let's use neighbors function to go through the neighbors. Now let's append the neighbors to our created array. Let's restrict the append function by saying that you can append only if uh, the point is not in the group PTS. Now each point has a list of available cells. Now we need to choose only one cell from all the available cells. Let's write here another condition that says if the length of the array is bigger than zero, we actually starting to evaluate the expressions here. Let's create a variable index and the attribute target here that equals to our array with the index we didn't specify yet. So let's specify the index. It's going to be a random value from 0 to 1 multiplied by the length of the array. Let's put some values into the random function. I will use point number multiplied by id as randomizers. And let's convert the values into integer values. Okay, the targeting algorithm for points is done. Let's copy the wrangle and use it for the cells too. We will tweak the code a tiny bit, but first let's invert the group so we are iterating on the cells. Change the group to PTS now. Let's get rid of ID as it's anyway minus one for each cell. I would also like to tidy up the code a bit and change the available cells to available points. Let's use a shortcut which is Ctrl plus H and let's rename all cell to PT. Click replace all and the code is pretty clean now. Now let's perform the data transfer. I will create a new wrangle here. And we will be working on the points group. Let's take out the target attributes from the previous two nodes which are desired points and desired cells. Let's read target attribute from points first and let's call the variable desired cell. Let's read desired pt from our desired cell, which comes from the wrangle cells. And we are writing here a condition if. And we wrote here a condition that says if the cell that we picked picked us, we perform the data transfer. Let's give to the target cell our point group. And kicking out the point from the group. And let's don't forget about the ID attribute, which we also need to transfer to the cell. And the last step here is to set the attribute ID to minus one. Let's also tell that if desired cell wasn't found, don't execute the code below. 
it's time to see how the algorithm works if you solve it a few times. So let's add a for loop with feedback. Now you can see the attribute transfer between the points, ID is moving around and also the group. But now it's not that clear how they move. Let's create real point position movements now. And then we will see what we need to change in the algorithm itself. First of all, we need to create an amount of points that is equal to the amount of points in the group PTS. Let's create a detailed attribute in which we will store the number of points that are in the group PTS. Let's call the attribute count and with the function endpoints group, we get the current number of points in the group PTS. Here we go, it's 41 points. Next, let's append a point generate node with which we will generate the exact amount of points that is specified in our count attribute. I will use here detail function to take out the count attribute from our spare input. Here we go, we have generated 41 points. Don't forget to enumerate the points. Now we need to copy the position data from the points that are in the group PTS onto these points here. And we're going to do that with an attribute copy node. Let's delete color from here. And we've got here a wrong data transfer. Because, as you may know, attribute copy transfers attributes from one geostream to another by matching their PTNAM attributes that are on the both geostreams. But we prepared already the ID attribute, so we really tell from which point in that right geostream we want to transfer the attributes to which point in that left geostream. Now let's link the iterations to the current frame number. Let's see if everything works well. Okay, as I can see, attribute copy works well. Let's make them interpolating from one position to another with the read time node. Let's change the speed and make it 10 times slower. And as you can see, the checkbox is already turned on to interpolate the points. And now we can see the animation properly. But I notice we have here a slight problem and it's the back and forth animation of the points. So now we should get back to the code and see if we can fix that. Let's get back to our target finder wrangle here. And if we take a look at our index variable, we have here the random function and we use ptnum as our randomizer and also the ID, which is not fully random for an animation. So we need something that really changes each iteration and it's obviously the iteration number of the for loop, which we're gonna add as a seed number for the random function. So let's create meta import node here and add it as a spare input to the wrangles. And now we can type in the iteration number here as a seed for the random function. Cool, let's copy paste it to the cells too. Let's take a final look at it. Check template flag on the grid. And let's play the animation here. And as you can see, we don't have the problem anymore. What about our linear animation of the points? It looks ugly now. I don't think we are fine with it. So let's change the interpolation method to subdivision. Now we can see a smoother animation, but also a problem with the points motion paths. Just take a look at the point 17. As you can notice, it shortens its path, which is obviously not what we want here. And that happens because of their continuous movements with no delays. Let's assume point 11 moves on the second frame here and then here. Subdivision interpolation method will take it as a one single movement and smooth the hell out of it. So let's fix the issue. I will insert a new wrangle here. Let's set the group to PTS 
and turn on the display flag on the for loop with feedback. I will start with a prototype condition. Let's say point 11 will move somewhere here. On the next frame, the point with the ID of minus one will get the ID of 11. So that's when we can really tell when the attribute transfer was made. Now let's prototype the condition. If previous ID does not equal to the current ID in this current iteration, we block the point. Nothing works because we don't have our previous IDs specified yet. As you know, here in the merge wrangle, we are transferring the IDs and groups. So the place where we can take the previous ID, like from the previous iteration, is right above the merge node by just using a wrangle here. So our code here doesn't work yet because the block attribute doesn't do anything. Hence, let's make it affecting the actual algorithm. Let's correct the condition here. This condition allows the append function to append the neighbors. Writing in a simple addition here, which will allow the condition to be true only if the block equals to zero, i.e. the point is unblocked. And the same for the cells. Well, let's see what we get, but first I would like to change something. Let's minus one the frame expression here. So we start from the iteration zero. Now you can see it's working because after they make their steps, they are basically blocked forever. Now we need to upgrade the code a bit. Let's say we want to have a parameter that allows us to control how many frames a point should be stopped for. Let's add here a new attribute, which will be named swap iteration which is gonna say on which iteration a point has been moved. So let's make it equal to the current iteration number. Just to repeat, here we have our block attribute, which blocks the points that has been moved and swap iteration, the iteration when a point has been moved. So the final step here is to write another condition and do a bit of a subtraction here. Let's subtract from our current iteration, the swap iteration we have here. And say if the difference between these numbers is equal to or bigger than our delay. So if the condition is true, we unblock the points. Otherwise, it's gonna be blocked. So let's set the value to one for now. Now we can go and check if it fixed our problem. And as you can see, no curvy paths here anymore. You can play with the delay settings for sure and see how it affects the animation. You can set higher values if you want to, not a big difference here right now. And finally, the final step here. I would like to add a bit more control over the animation. I would like to control the percentage of points moving each iteration. Let's insert here another condition. Here we perform the data transfer, so let's restrict it a bit. If random is lower than some threshold, using ptnum as our randomizer and iteration number as our seed for the random function. And don't forget to add this pair input. Finally, let's check this out. And here we got our 25% of the points moving. Let's also try 10% of the points. And my favorite, 50% of the points. So that's pretty it for the tutorial. Now let's take a quick look at the assets. Okay, here I have path solver and also octatree asset. Let's start with the path solver. I will add here a grid with the default settings for now. And let's take a look at what we have here. 
you can see it's working pretty fine. We can also try out some different connectivity methods here like columns, maybe some triangles. And as you can see, they all work pretty well. Okay, to the topic of settings. When working with the pass solver, the first thing you need to do is to decide whether you want to use for loop or solver. The quick advice here is if you have less than 10,000 points, you are fine with the for loop. But if you have tens of thousand points uh, or one million points, you should stick to the solver. Or you can always use the solver, but there is a, a little downside with it, I think. Let's go to the 48 frame and change the settings here. And you can see the color of the bar is changed now. Which means now we need to go and press the reset simulation button to see the result. And here we have our updated version. You need to do that every time you change a setting there. All right, let's move on. I will set the settings to defaults. Let's do a quick comparison test of the speed between this uh, solver and for loop. So we have here like 10,000 points, I think. And if we play the animation, you can see this is pretty fast. Although if we choose for loop over the solver, it's gonna be pretty slow in this case. We can see the FPS drop down to four or three. All right, let's get back to the solver. Grid back to default. Now let's review the settings quickly. Going from top to bottom, here we have our first two parameters. Solve delay controls the interval between the whole system solving. While next step delay just controls uh, the interval between uh, the point position movements for each point rather than the whole system. Let's try out the first one. You can see here a larger gap between their steps. And if we add the next step delay for each point, the gap is going to be even larger. Next, we have speed. It's obvious and also uh, the interpolation cubic method. It has this jumping animation, which is kind of cool. Next, we have these moving points, which you are familiar with. I also added this open cells parameter with which you can control the percentage of open cells. Kind of a handy thing for additional randomization. And now let's check out the animation. And here you can see my mistake. When I changed the settings, I didn't press the reset simulation button. And also this time, the blue bar didn't go orange. Let's press the reset simulation button. And now we can see the correct result. Now it looks like 20% of the points move in. Just to remember, the blue bar won't go orange if you change the settings on the first frame, which means you anyway need to press the reset simulation button when you change a setting. Now let's take a look at transfer attribute. If you want to transfer any attribute from this geometry here, you need to write in the name of the attribute in this parameter. Here's also a parameter for attribute linking. If you want the points to take the attribute on the initial state on the first frame and then move it around, you should press the link attribute checkbox. Otherwise the points will be moving and taking the attributes from like this original geometry every time. Next bunch of uh, parameters is related to distribution. It's just the settings from the attribute noise node. Just play with them and see how it affects the whole distribution. Okay, that's it for the path solver. Now let's take a look at the octatree asset. Let's add a cube here. By the way, it can be any geometry you want. And let's connect it to the asset. And it creates for us this kind of a structure. And if we play the animation, it's also animated. Okay, let's take a look at the settings here. Iteration controls uh, the overall depth and subdivision tweak is just an additional parameter that affects the division algorithm a bit. If you don't want the objects to be rotated, just unclick the checkbox. In case you don't like how it's randomized, you just can control the seed of the rotation. There is also seed for the multi-object mode. Let's add here another cube and change the overall look of it. Now you can see it became a bit more interesting because of the various objects. 
Next setting here is the time offset. It's just an optional thing. You can see that there are objects that can move at, like at the same time, like three objects at the same time. So if you don't want that, you should press uh, the checkbox. But be aware, it's pretty slow. You also can change the animation time for sure. I usually stick to the subdivision method. Point step tab is related to the animation. Control speed, control the amount of uh, open cells. As you can see, if we turn off the run cell threshold, uh, you basically get all the cells open, so it doesn't give the best look for the animation. Now let's get to the point noise tab. Those settings are pretty familiar. They are all from the attribute noise uh, node. They are all made to uh, change the initial state look of the structure. And as you can see, the whole thing is consists of the objects and also the grid. And if you want to split them, you should really add, for instance, a split node. And in the group parameter, you can find the grid name attribute by which you can split them. And that's it. Thank you for watching the tutorial. And if you're interested in the project files and the assets, the links to them will be left in the description under this video. If you like the tutorial, you may want to support Antagma on their Patreon. There are tons of good stuff that will help you to become a better Houdini artist. And again, thank you for watching, stay safe and goodbye.